What's up fish keepers? Back again, it's been about a month. I had a lot of stuff going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys a quick update video on how everything is doing, where we're at, where we're going in the near future, as well as some other stuff. Let's get into the beginnings. I'm gonna go over this rack behind me and then we'll move on to the other tanks. Let's start with the most popular of the tanks I have, the Fluval Flexes. These things have been blowing up on YouTube ever since I did the build series for them. I'm gonna throw a link to this one right up here for you guys. This used to be Pennywise the Betta's tank. Unfortunately, we did lose Pennywise to tumors, which has been a common problem I've been having with Betta's. So I think I'm gonna take a break from them for a little bit. It's just been frustrating. As soon as I get close to them, uh, they'll just let go. We're looking into doing some nano fish. So I'm, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the video, but uh, for now, let's kind of go over the looks of this tank. Now, Pennywise was raised with cherry shrimp inside of his tank. As you can tell, they are absolutely flourishing in here. So, bettas and shrimp, debatable topic, but can be done. Yeah, definitely can be done. Oh, cool. There's like a like a blue really in there. wonder how that got in there. Anyways, um, as well as I keep ram's horn snails. I don't know how well it's going to focus. There's like one up there in the middle of the screen for you. There's also one down here. Uh, so I do keep ram's horns in both my, most of my tanks as well as shrimp if possible. And this tank is doing really well. We got some botanicals in here, some dragon stone, some bucephalandra. This is some flame moss. I'm gonna have to do a trim on that and kind of get it growing more around the wood like I wanted. We got some, I think that's Ludwigia repens narrow leaf, if I remember right. Uh, back here, we got some Alternanthera reineke. The dwarf hair grass I planted there wasn't doing so well due to me not running CO2 on this tank as planned. In the near future, I will, but we're gonna look at changing the stock up in here first. I do wanna jump into some nano fish thanks to the tank next to this. So we'll look into that in the near future, but for now, let's move on to the other Fluval Flex. So here is the other Fluval Flex. Now, these are both nine gallons. And if you didn't know that, I will also throw a link to this build right up here in the corner. Uh, this tank here used to be Candyman, the Betta's tank again. Lost the tumors, driving me crazy with this stuff. Bettas are on hold from here for right now. I'm, I'm gonna have to start looking at more reputable places and stuff like that and focus on the, there's a <laughs> there's a ram's horn shrimp surfing around the tank, or a uh, ram's horn snail, sorry, not a shrimp. Um, there are shrimp in here though. They're yellow shrimp or tangerine shrimp. Again, just flourishing in here with a betta at the time. So again, can be done. Not necessarily it'll work, but it can be done in some cases. Botanicals as well. Um, also gonna do nanos in here. We got some Limnophila up there. Floating plants as always, just like the other flex. Hygrophila penitophyta starting to grow out of the top. So I'm gonna have to either trim that down or work on a future project I'll tell you about later. And we got some Hydrocardal Japan in here. Uh, there's also some crypts down there hiding in the bottom that aren't doing so hot, but. And Bucephalandra, one of my favorite plants. This is Sirius Stone, sand, ADA aqua soil. Really good, awesome tank. CO2 is not hooked up yet, um, as you can tell. So there is no CO2 on this tank and it is growing very, very well. Anyways, let's move on to what I thought was gonna be my pride and joy, which is currently struggling to keep hold. So let's move over to that tank. Next up, we have the UNS 60S, I believe it is. It's a roughly about a 10 gallon tank. Uh, this tank is pretty cool. It has some bumblebee gobies and some Rasbora Mera. They look a lot like chili Rasboras, uh, but they have a slightly different pattern. Super, super vibrant right now. I'll get some close-ups of those guys before we go. And then, of course, we got the bumblebee gobies. Those guys are doing awesome. Now, this tank is supposed to be Monte Carlo with some Bucephalandra, a uh, little bit of weeping moss up top there. And then back in the corner there, there's some Junkus Repens. All of it has been completely obliterated by this hair algae in here. Now, what that tells me is this tank needs CO2, but again, I've been slacking on setting that up. I really need to get on that. This light only runs like five hours a day, I believe, at about 50%. It is the current USA Serene kit. I didn't think it was gonna be able to do this much algae, but apparently even at 50%, it is 100% capable. Granted, it does have ADA aqua soil and a good quality light, which I'm not being very smart by not hooking up CO2 in this tank, technically. Um, it should be growing a lot better. Um, let's get a close up on these guys real quick. These are the Rasbora Mera. They look a lot like chili Rasboras with a slightly different pattern. Pretty cool looking fish. Actually, you know what? I think that one right there is a chili Rasbora and these ones are the Rasbora Meras. But anyway, 
Then we got your bumblebee gobies. These guys are awesome. Such personable fish, I love having them. There's another one right here. Come on, focus. There you go. And you can see, really see the detail on that hair algae. So again, this tank needs some CO2. It's the missing link. Green hair algae like that is a pure sign that you have low CO2 and everything else right where it needs to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up some CO2 on this in the near future. Otherwise, even from a, from a distance, this tank looks fantastic. I mean, this is everything I wanted it to be. I kind of hope the rocks went a little above that, but we'll do that on a future scape. Um, it is ran with a UNS canister filter as well to keep the circulation going and stuff like that. So all around, it's a great tank. It will come back. It's just been nothing but trouble lately. So as far as these three tanks go, as you can tell, lost a bed of that's trouble, lost a bed of that's trouble, tons of algae that's trouble. But they're still here. They're still gonna flourish. We're gonna get some nanos for this tank and this tank. A couple more for this one due to the low stock. A couple of those rasboras jumped out during the move when I first moved over here. If you haven't seen that video, there's another video about how I was moving. So other than that, let's move on to the next tank. Next up we got, this is my little plant farm. Uh, it's just a small two and a half gallon tank. Has some boost of flandra in there with some alternate there at Reineke. Uh, short and tall varieties. You can tell as it kind of grows up towards the back. And then there's some Rotella Indica in here that I just did a massive trim on. Uh, another thing, full of ram's horns, as always. I love having snails. There's a couple shrimp in here too. Stragglers that have made their way into this tank through nets and plants and all sorts of stuff. So this tank is kind of just like a thrown together plant farm, which we're also going to be removing that and talking about that in the future in this video as well. Um, what we're going to be doing with a different style plant farm uh, to kind of make room for some other stuff. So let's move forward onto the tanks next to this. Next up, we got four Aquion cube tanks. These are all six gallon tanks. This is gonna be the next build series, if possible, I'm hoping. Um, what I wanna do is I'm gonna do Caradina shrimp in each one of these tanks. There's gonna be four different Caradina shrimps. They're all gonna be ran with a sponge filter, some Brightwell substrate, as well as some leaves, little glass dishes to feed them. And like I said, four different varieties of Caradina shrimp. I kind of have them chosen already, but if you would like to donate your thoughts on possible species to put in here, let me know down in the comments below. I'm definitely willing to answer those comments for you. If you guys haven't seen my, my videos in the past, or if you have and you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe right here. Um, click on the link in the bottom right hand corner, and that will lead you to following me, which helps me grow and getting these things done. Up above these, we got a Monstera deliciosa and some snake plants that we've had for about a year. Um, the Monstera was doing some converting. At this point right now, it is growing new sprouts. Uh, it is winter, so it is kind of hibernating, but still growing little tiny leaves, just not the not the big old leaves. So we'll get that thing next to the next to the sun here soon and keep going with that. Next up though, let's move on to the 55 gallon tank and give you an update on that. We got the 55 gallon, which technically turned into a plant farm. Uh, I did have some Buenos Aires Tetras in here. By the way, lesson learned, do not put Buenos Aires Tetras in your planted aquarium. These are supposed to have leaves like six inches long and those are all maybe an inch. Um, pretty much every plant has the bottom leaves completely stripped off them thanks to those. Uh, the only thing they really didn't touch are these crypts, all these big crypts in here as well as the moss. They did not touch those, but any kind of stem plant, they have absolutely had the heyday with. So the fish are out. Those got sent to a new home. Now this is just gonna kind of grow plants for a little bit. I am gonna end up taking this down. Um, this is the part I was just telling you about. I am gonna make a new plant farm. I'm gonna be shooting for more of like a 20 gallon or something like that, something smaller um, that I can kind of hide underneath this stand or something like that to grow plants. And I'm gonna move everything from the plant farm and this tank and any extra plants that I have into that. Um, I might do a couple of them just because the vast majority of plants in these things, as well as I'm gonna start stockpiling some plants that are growing as um, terrestrial or above the water or terrarium plants and stuff like that. I'm gonna start doing some of that too in the near future. So make sure you guys keep up with your post notifications and subscribe if you wanna keep up with that stuff. It is gonna be new territory for me, but I definitely wanna get into some like insects and 
reptiles and stuff like that. So pay attention to that in the near future. Otherwise, yeah, this thing is pretty simplistic. Has some Amano shrimp in here and some ram's horn snails and just a plethora of plants. So this tank kind of fed all the tanks with plants. That's kind of how I've always dealt with that. This tank was just meant for shrimp and growing tons of plants. And then it had a planaria explosion and I had to put some kind of fish in there to eat the planaria. And I wasn't thinking when I added Buenos Aires Tetras. Yes, they ate all the planaria, but they started eating all the plants too. So there's a lesson for you guys. You guys can skip that challenge and just stay away from Buenos Aires Tetras if you got a planted tank. But let's move on to the next tank, which is gonna be the Cory Cat. We have another tank that is doing just awesome. This is my Corydoras 20 long. This has a bunch of Corydoras trilineatus. You can see one hanging out right there. Uh, they're pretty, pretty cautious. They don't really like to show themselves a whole lot in here, but this tank has blue really shrimp in it as well as the Corydoras. I do call out any that have any signs of red on them. So you'll notice there aren't really any that have red on them. Um, being a black water tank, it does have a lot of botanicals in here to keep the water that chocolatey brown kind of color. I do not pull out any of the waste from those botanicals. I do just leave them in there and let them kind of feed the plants. Hence why this Lemnophila is just growing crazy right out of the sand. Uh, I also got some Amazon swords back there with a little bit of aqua soil to kick those up a notch. Uh, those plants just got thrown in there with some extra and they're not doing too hot. So I'll probably end up removing them. I do got a little boost of flander trying to make its way down here. That fell off one of the tissue cultures I had. So I figured I'd throw it in here and see what happens. So far, so good. Unfortunately, the only so far not so good is this tank was meant to breed these Corydoras trilineatus, like that little guy coming out under the wood there. Now, I don't know if I'm missing something. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of plants in here for them to lay eggs on, so I'm thinking about doing a DIY map, mop video, um, you know, like a breeding mop. Um, I'm gonna make my own. I prefer to do it that route if possible so I can learn something from it. Um, so pay attention for future videos on that. I do plan on doing that in the near future. So otherwise this tank is doing really well. The corridors are doing very healthy. The shrimp are obviously breeding like mad in here and everything is just spectacular. So has ram's horns in it. Also has some Malaysian trumpet snails as well as a couple nearite snails to keep everything clean. Being it is a botanical garden, essentially it is gonna grow algae. So I just allow it to do so. Um, but having the algae eaters, definitely knocks down some of that algae and keeps it nice and clean and tidy just like this tank is right now so last but not least we got felix which is actually not felix it's a female so i do have to work on changing the name for that but she is a gorgeous axolotl who is very very spicy she likes to nibble on your fingers if you're not careful <laughs> we do have a bunch of anubias in here that i have been saving for years a bunch of it flowering and yes again shrimp there are shrimp in this tank. There are multiple shrimp in this tank living with this pretty lady. Now, obviously they have a lot of space to hide inside of this stuff, especially since axolotls can't see very well. So they do a very good job of cleaning. Um, this is where I put all my cull shrimp. If, he, if she ends up eating them, I do not mind. It does not bother me one bit. Um, it's kind of the reason that I put the culls in here. I'm hoping she eats them, but has turned out that they like to breed in here with her so <laughs> she has little baby shrimp running around all over the place in this little thing so this tank does need an overhaul it is super super generic i need to do something with it if you got some ideas down in the comments let me know this is a 40 long so there are some things i could do with it i try to keep the water a little bit low so maybe i could do something above like a little waterfall or something like that or maybe some plants growing above the water so it doesn't look so plain i guess you could say but let me know down in the comments what you think felix here the axolotl needs a new name so let me know that that as well down in the comments let me know what you think uh we're going to move on to what we're talking about in the future otherwise uh yeah if you guys got any ideas or whatnot let me know down in the comments i'm always friendly and willing to answer questions um if you have any questions or anything you want to know or any advice you even want to give me i'm here for, i'm all ears man i'm all here to listen to you guys so let me know what you think i need more house plants so let me know about those, huh? I'm thinking about stocking some house plants in between here. I think that would look really neat. But anyways, let's get into the main part. All right, everyone, that is it for the updates on what we currently have. Um, like I said, let me know down in the comments if you got any suggestions as far as nano fish for both of these flexes, as well as shrimp, 
ideas you guys have for these Caradina shrimp up here, uh, as well as the other stuff I talked about with the uh, rescaping the axolotl tank, for example, and stuff like that. So let me know what you think down in the comments on ideas on stuff like that. I would love to give you guys these update videos. I hope to do more. I apologize for the inconvenience of not posting a whole lot lately. Being an automotive mechanic, I get quite busy sometimes, especially during the end of winter. Um, so again, I apologize for that, but we're back into this game. We need more house, house plants too. So let me know on some ideas on that. I'm kind of a greenhorn. So make sure if you let me know some that they're not gonna just die on me right away, please. <laughs> That'd be nice. But yeah, I don't know. Love to have you guys comment below. Love to answer your guys' comments and, you know, get to know you guys. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Otherwise, the last update I wanna give you is what we're gonna do in place of this 55 gallon behind me. So I'm gonna spin you around and we're gonna talk about that real quick. So in place of this tank, what we're gonna do, like I said, is we're gonna be removing this tank. I'm gonna put the stand underneath the axolotl tank and get rid of that old concrete brick idea. Um, we're gonna go with just a regular stand underneath there remove this 55 gallon and we're going to get a small racking system right here to do some terrariums as well as some insects uh some reptiles a few things i would like to do is crested geckos some various species of mantis as well as isopods i'm not sure why but all that stuff is kind of itching my brain to try and do um i do want to make some just regular ter or terrariums based off of stuff i find in the woods and stuff like that as well I think that would all be interesting. So let me know if you got any ideas on that stuff. Otherwise, I got YouTube channels I do watch to kind of figure that stuff out. Because yes, I am a YouTube watcher, not just a YouTube videoer. So I do like to enjoy videos as well as I like to make them. So I hope you guys enjoy that aspect of me and myself. And I hope you guys enjoy these videos and stuff I try to give you. I try not to overwhelm you with reviews and rants and stuff like that. So try to keep it basic for you but i hope you guys enjoy this stuff i know for a fact i highly enjoy talking to you guys in the comments so shoot me down some comments below give me a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe down below other than that we'll see you in the next one peace